Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 70 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I'm here with Pervez Ahmed. Hey, uh, how are you, Zaki? And uh, welcome back, listeners. It's, I feel like it's been a while. How was, how was your Eid festivities? It was uh, very blessed. Great, great, yeah. excellent. Any reflections on the on the on the season? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I feel like this has almost been kind of our post summer hiatus. So uh, I, I know in the summer you did some travel. You, you, you did some traveling. So how was that? Oh my gosh! I, yeah, I was I was all over the place. I was in I was in Chicago right. for a weekend, and then I was in L.A. for a weekend, and then I was in Spokane for a weekend. I was in Spokane um, for for my wife's high school reunion. Oh. Wow. Okay. T uh, what? T t t ten years. For, I don't want to. Tw twenty years. Twenty years. Okay. So. Yeah. So I had my twenty year last year, and then she had hers this year. Um, yeah. And how's and, that like going to your like spouses? Yeah. You know. Seriously. Like I see. I went to mine alone last year because I was like, you know, it's not going to be fun for for her. And and I I went along this time, and my my hypothesis was proved out because I'm just kind of sitting there in the corner. You know, playing twenty forty eight on my phone basically. <laughs> exactly <laughs> for, right for two hours. So, so uh, folks, spare your spouses from your high school reunion. Seriously, I mean, I, I, I would imagine if I went back to my twenty fifth or thirtieth or whatever, maybe I, I would barely know or remember folks, let alone expect or you know have any expectations that my wife would. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but did she have a good time? I guess that's what I guess that's she what did. Counts. She did. It was it was uh, she she was a uh, a popular fixture. People kept uh, flagging her down to talk to her. So yeah, I know she did. I think was wasn't she like valedictorian of her class or something? She was. Yeah. Wow. She's, okay. She's much smarter than me. Did you have expectations still live up to? Like, oh, who did the class valedictorian marry? Oh. Uh, I <laughs> I don't know. I, geez, I wasn't thinking about that, but now you've you've got me. Uh, you, I'm just you, kidding. You've I'm got just me kidding. concerned. But I would imagine so, right? I mean, you, I don't know. When you have uh, expect certain expectations of the of the of the class of president course. or of course, or yeah, she, she anyway. married this this uh, schmuck uh, playing twenty forty eight. You know, I have to I have to plead. Uh, um, Ignorance on what 2048 is. Uh, I'm assuming is it a futuristic? Is that a reference to a year? No, no. It's it's the game with the tiles. You know where you you have the numbers and you add them up and they they increase and then you your goal is to have the tiles add up to 2048. Oh, okay. And you never can played you go this game? Over... No, 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 I haven't. Uh, no, it, no. It's a fun game. Oh, okay. And 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 if you you can go over and then you, you can lose. go over, you can keep going. But oh, it, it, it's it. it's you you know you've got a grid of like twelve squares or sixteen or whatever it is, and um, your goal is you you don't want the 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 grid to fill up. Ah, okay. so it's sort of like Tetris meets math. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, speaking of grids filling up, you know what? Um, you you, you know good. what we That's have filled up. I, I've taught yeah, you well. Thank you. Thank you. You've taught me well. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Um, no, uh, <laughs> this is probably not going to be as good as you maybe have anticipated. Or, uh, <laughs> but um, I was actually um, referring to our Patreon page. And, um, uh, you know, folks have been going to patreon.com slash diffuse congruence and signing up and becoming um, uh, patrons of the show. And um, I know we've kind of teased this for a while, but I wanted to actually acknowledge um, uh, uh, two in particular. I know we, we, we had made it a point to uh, – um, uh, give special sort of privileges or, um, um, I don't know, you little treats for people who sign up at the $25 a month level. And I wanted to, um, actually, uh, identify two in particular, uh, uh, um, and that being, uh, Abdul Khimani who had signed up back in August. So relatively, I'm sorry, not in August, um, uh, signed up a few months ago, sorry, but, uh, this is August. Yeah, I know exactly. Sorry, this is uh, I'm looking at the wrong thing here, but um, yeah. So uh, Abdul Khamani, who I know is, is an attorney actually here in the Bay Area, and uh, speaking of attorneys, um, 
And also past guest of the show, Ahmed Nassar, also signed up to be a patron at that $25 a month level. So um, really, really appreciative of that support. And I am forgetting a couple more, uh, or not forgetting, but there's a couple more to mention. And one is, um, actually, I don't know what it is about attorneys, but um, Salman Qadr, who actually uh, I do know from Michigan and is a longtime listener of the show and uh, a lawyer based out of Michigan. And he also is a $25 a month patron. And last but not least, our very good friend, Sayed Hassan or Assad, who is the... Um, the virtuo- virtuoso musician that you hear at the beginning of the show. So the uh, the music that has become very uh, that has become completely associated with diffuse congruence. So um, thank you, Asad, and uh, thank you for all of our patrons. Really, um, whether it's at the, at a dollar a month level or twenty five dollar a month level, uh, every little bit helps, and uh, it's because of uh, your continued support that we've been able to, uh, you know. Um, uh, start looking at investing in some equipment and doing some of the other things that we had talked about. So really excited about that. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, other exciting news, uh, with regards to the show, I feel like a lot of the show, a lot of this is going to be just kind of updating people about the show is, uh, we might be actually taking this show on the road, um, next month or in a couple of months, right? We, um, uh, we were invited to, uh, host, uh, or actually do the show live at a panel, um, at the annual Muppies Conference, which is a Muslim urban professionals conference that they hold every year, this year being in Toronto. So it looks like me and Zucky are going to be uh, Canada bound. So hopefully your passport ready, Zucky. Um, I will begin that no, wait. process. Is that, is that even, is that, I don't know. What is the latest? Do you know? Do you need, do you, I, I would imagine you need a valid I, I believe so. That, that's, yeah. that's yeah. I should probably get that taken care of. Because I think that I mean the last time I was in Canada, if I recall correctly, um, was probably what Omar's wedding or your your, your brother in law, my cousin's wedding. Yeah, and that was like fourteen years ago. Fourteen years ago, and I don't know what the rules were back then, but um, I would imagine uh, either they're the same or they've changed uh, somewhat. So. Um, that 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 reminds me too. We we need to look into that. Make sure we're 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 uh, we're, we're ready to travel. That's probably a good a, idea. Yeah. In a Trump world, um, but um, anyway, um, well, that, that's that. that that that's another exciting part of the show. And what else? Um, I think that about covers it. Um, thank you for all those who engage us on uh, social media and uh, for all the wonderful feedback we got for the Brother Ali show. That was a lot of fun to do and. Um, and I'm glad you all enjoyed listening to it. And uh, we promised to have Brother Ali back on the show to kind of flesh out more of his life story. I felt like we got into a lot of uh, sort of other stuff, but we didn't really kind of talk about his life story as much as I wanted to, at least. So um, we'll have him back on very soon. God willing. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. So what else? I, I guess um, uh, I, I know I referenced Trump world, but I guess we can't have a show and not talk about what's going on in the world. And, um, well, th- we li- this is, this has been a week. This is the week, hasn't it? I mean, it, it, but then again, I always felt like every, every news cycle or every, every newsworthy story that has come out of the administration would be the, the week or the, 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 the story, but I've yet to be surprised. Um, but why is this diff- Why is this week different? Do you think? Well, I, you know, it's it's kind of funny because we've been we've been uh, trying to schedule our conversation for the last week, and just you know, we've had various scheduling issues, and in a way that sort of worked out because yeah. every day that we've pushed uh, back, you know, has given us sort of new grist for the mill. I think uh, I don't I don't know if this is an inflection point. I don't know if this is the beginning of the end or any of those uh, sort of cliches that we're hearing. However, I think that things are sort of fundamentally different now because uh, the the uh, angles of egress into wrongdoing by this president have branched out from one one single uh, tunnel, if you will. Uh, which was, you know, the the Robert Mueller investigation into something that's now happening on multiple fronts. You've got the Michael Cohen guilty plea. You've got uh, Paul Manafort being uh, uh, found guilty on eight counts. You've got various things that, as they progress, will expose further wrongdoing and will expose that wrongdoing in ways that are outside the reach of this president to be able to stop. 
Yeah, you know, um, I, I guess what, what, what gives me pause, uh, and I agree, I mean, the, the, those two particular events that you referenced uh, that happened this week, actually, uh, in, in addition to folks coming out or, or we're learning that there are people within Trump's, uh, what would I say, I guess, either group of advisors or people close to the to, to Trump as either as an individual or the Trump organization who are cooperating with with authorities. Right. Yeah. We have um, uh, uh, a pecker, a uh, longtime friend uh, and uh, what uh, I guess CEO of the company that owns the National Enquirer now cooperating with uh, with with the authorities. That's right. Um, and we also have, uh, I guess, uh, Trump's, Trump, the Trump Organization CFO. The name escapes me. Wow. Alan Weisselberg. Weisselberg, that's right, who is also co- cooperating, both of whom have been given immunity for their cooperation, which usually means that the, uh, that the feds have something that they – or I guess the, the, the feds have identified something, things of interest from those two parties and have hence given them uh, immunity to uh, – Get them to sing, I guess, to, would be the would be the parlance, right? So, yeah, the, yeah. That, that's the the nineteen uh, sixties gangster TV show parlance. <laughs> well, it seems like everyone's using it. Or I guess if you watch Fox News, <laughs> you're going to uh, sing. Just, See, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not just singing; they're composing. Apparently, <laughs> that's too. Right. So, according to Fox News, so. Um, <laughs> But I, I guess what gives me pause whenever I hear about stories like this, and I agree, this week was unusual. It was a lot of stuff that that that, that, that sort of broke. Is that um, you know uh, we're just living in a time where you know those facts just don't matter to a huge swath of the population. Now, at the end of the day, I guess it's not really going to be the that swath of the uh, of the population that's going to determine um, uh, Trump's political future, uh, but. I guess that's what always gives me pause is that there's still that group of the electorate who will support this president no matter what. And we have a feckless Republican Party that is, um, you know, just sort of uh, uh, Trump bound and, and, and refusing to take any sort of action, regardless of what the investigation seems to, you know, uncover. Well, you know, I'm, I'm past caring about that 35 percent of the electorate. That's in lockstep with this president. I'm 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 so far past all the think pieces and the mm-hmm. oh let's let's uh, examine the malaise of the Trump voter because you know uh, I'm just I'm just done I'm done with them you know th- that they they have been so loyal uh, through through every like they knew who he was before they voted nothing in in the, in the two years since has changed uh, the trajectory of that perception so I'm I'm done with them I've had it. Uh, you know, and then as far as the the Republican Party, uh, am I surprised? Absolutely not, because they again, the, these are the same people who denied the previous president his right to have a a Supreme Court uh, nominee, at least given a hearing, uh, just to play mm-hmm. politics. You know, so so I'm I I'm as far as Republicans go, as far as Trump voters go, they're not even on my radar. Uh, I think that when you look at the system uh, uh, of of checks and balances, at least part of it is working. In spite of uh, the constant uh, attacks from Trump and the administration to uh, uh, to sort of attack the very foundations of yeah, our, I mean, it's it's astonishing to me because because yeah. you've got you've got. Um, He's sort of haranguing Jeff Sessions on a daily basis via Twitter, which is so t- totally passive aggressive, right? But when you think about it, what is Jeff Sessions doing but e- executing uh, in absurd detail the Trump agenda, right? Uh, it's totally. it's based on you know uh, denying minority rights. It's about uh, uh, speeding up you know deportations of of, for, of of illegal immigrants, et cetera, et cetera. Like it, it go down the checklist, right? It's like Correct. it's like your 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 Legion of Doom checklist, right? But what <laughs> what hasn't he done? He hasn't been a bootleg. His original sin, yeah. as it were. Yeah. His original sin, as it were. That's yeah. exactly right. He the one the one right thing he did, which is legally, I have to recuse myself. That's his original sin. 
Right. So that he was knee deep in Russia meetings as well, yeah. and he and he had failed to disclose that at his and at, and he was his, part uh, of the campaign. So it stands to reason right. that you know that that he can't be a part of an investigation about that campaign. But but I mean that tells you everything about this man. So what what floors me is to this day you've got. I mean I I people I know who passionately defend him, and I'm like why? Tell me why? Tell me why? And they right. can't. They don't have an answer. You know they. I I guess because he 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 you know he ticks off the libs. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so, it speaks so, his mind, tells it how it is, or whatever. You know, all the stuff that you hear from from the sort of Trump supporter, right? Yeah. Uh, which, which, which is which is interesting because I think, you know, part of what we're talking about is the fact that he does violate so many norms that we've come to expect from, um, you know, a democratically elected president, and 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 yet that seems to be the very thing that. Uh, uh, some, at least, of his base, some of his supporters seem to seem to value the most the fact that he does sort of, uh, you know, isn't and and you know what what they call politically correct refers to I think in part at least this this sort of uh, breaking of political norms that we've come to expect from again a democratically elected leader. That's right, and that's what's shocking, and and I think that you know. Just the kind of uh, attempts, and I think you you mentioned one, you know, the constant berating on social media uh, of his own attorney general, uh, and not to mention the reasons why he's doing so. Um, I know we referenced the sort of the original sin of why he, you know, of, of, of uh, Sessions recusing himself, but the fact that he can't seem to understand that the attorney general isn't his personal lawyer. That's isn't right. his personal fixer, right? That's and right. so even if even if Sessions hadn't recused himself, um, you know the expectations that at least Trump has of, of his own attorney general is violates so many constitutional norms um, of a sitting president and his uh, you know and and his department and uh, in general and in particular his attorney general. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I when you when you look at the way things the lay of the land right now, how much of it is sort of the uh, uh, fortunate happenstance? You know, he offered attorney general to Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani wanted secretary of state, and so that's why he gave it to Jeff Sessions. Okay, we can assume that Giuliani would not have been uh, an AG that Trump had a problem with. Mm-hmm. Um, had he taken Michael Cohen with him to Washington as Michael Cohen wanted, would yeah. you know? I mean, all of these. Little, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it, yeah. it's it's to me it. The, the, you know, obviously there's several lessons, but at least uh, uh, near the top of those lessons is is one who demands unfettered loyalty while giving none. Like, what do you expect? Right. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the, I mean. The, the, you mentioned Michael Cohen, uh, and 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 you talk about unfettered loyalty. I mean, that 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 you know, uh, you know, outside of the sort of present uh, predicament that Cohen found himself in, and hence perhaps flipped on Trump to use uh, an expression that 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 they were finding in the media, um, you know, because you know something that even Trump talked about how he doesn't like flippers, and it, it really should be outlawed, which sounded like something out of a Right, mobster. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, uh, this was a, this was his per- personal lawyer and fixer for twelve years. That's right. This is the president who prides himself as hiring the best people, surrounding himself by the best people. It seems like everybody in his sort of circle of influence or circle, uh, you know, of advisors, etc., are crooks or you know, yet to be yet to be uh, discovered crooks. Well, I mean, it tells you everything that he he's on Twitter. Uh, talking about oh you know uh, they're treating Paul Manafort like they treated Al Capone as if that's a bad thing. Right, 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 right. Exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. you know, through through the looking glass. Absolutely, and and again, you know, we talked about you know Michael Cohen flipping or what have you. Um, the, you know, the idea of someone cooperating with authorities, uh, you know, in in a criminal investigation. Um, to be something that should be blameworthy. I mean, that, you know, I mean, you can't even make this stuff up. Like, it's just, you talk about violating constitutional norms of a sitting president. I mean, we're just talking about 
the very sort of like, uh, again, something you mentioned at the very outset, which was the kind of, uh, the kind of uh, uh, undermining the very institutions of our democracy that we've come to expect and rely on is probably the biggest uh, victim of the Trump agenda and administration, right? Whether it's the constant attack on a free press, uh, whether it's uh, attacking his own Justice Department, uh, undermining or uh, uh, seeing the uh, his own intelligence services as, um, you know, sort of undermining his agenda, right? So yeah. It's just, it's just, we've never been here before. I mean, I, you know, last night I was watching Bill Maher and, and, and Maher had uh, Brennan on, former CIA director, who that was another news, that was in the news cycle, what, two weeks ago that he had a security clearance uh, revoked, which is yeah. very, again, we talk about norms being broken, but being very highly, uh, uh, you know, something we don't see very often. And, and that, and that too, uh, uh, you know, clearance being, you know, um, wielded as a political tool or a political bludgeon, right? That's right. Uh, or, or in this case, the revocation of. Um, but, 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 but Bill Maher sort of asked Brennan if he saw this as sort of the third major, uh, I guess, historical challenge that America has ever faced, the first being the Revolutionary War, the second being um, the, 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 the Civil War. And then if this is probably a, a, you know, a third instance of a real existential crisis for our country, yeah. um, I think that's one for the history books. Like, I don't know. I mean, I think that's, that's something that history um, and later generations will sort of uh, analyze and, and look at. But um, certainly I think living in, in these times and, and, and being of uh, at least, you know, a, in a, an observer with regards to, you know, politics for the last 25, at least 20, 25 years in, in terms of my own lifetime, um, I can say that uh, this is unlike anything I, I've ever seen. I, I agree. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah, it's something, this is something that I have to, you know, in my classes, I have to reiterate this because these kids, this is, you know, they don't have the, the, the length of experience uh, of observing politics, you know, I have to tell them again and again, this, it's not, it's not normal. Um, yeah. You know, what's happening right now. This is, this is, this is so far outside of the way things are supposed to be that it's worth recognizing that. And you need to be aware of that. Right. Right. Well, you know, I think, I think one of the things I know we've talked about on previous shows, uh, you know, um, where, you know, one of the problems, and I'm wondering how much of this you see with your students uh, as someone who's sort of engaging that demographic, I mean, certainly more than I do, which is, you know, in terms of where people get their information and, and, and people sort of existing within information silos where all they, all, you know, they, they are in these echo chambers where all they surround themselves with is either, um, uh, you know, fellow pontificators or people providing information um, that is that, – that, that just sort of uh, – you, you know what I mean. You, you, you know what I'm saying, that, that just sort of validates their own belief system. Right. Um, and, 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 and I think that's been really – you know, if, if we talk about how Russia meddled in and was able to undermine – our education. I mean, they didn't. They didn't hack our ballot boxes. I mean, what they were able to do was uh, sort of uh, engage in this kind of uh, campaign of disinformation and misinformation. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that continues to play out today, right? Whether it's the whole fake, you know, the president calling anything that that he disagrees with fake news, or the kind of conspiracy theories that we've come to learn of, like QAnon and others that that are promulgated within right wing circles. Um, you know, how, how do you, how do you deal with that? I mean, how do you as a, as an instructor, right. Of, of, of consuming media and, and instructing your students, um, you know, do you see that with young people? And, and, and if so, I mean, what kind of advice do you give them? Yeah. I mean, look, social media is, is the primary news source. And, and, uh, that's, that's, uh, I don't know how to fix that. You know, I, I think okay. I think by virtue of social media being your primary news source, you are seeing the news that you um, 
collate your feed to show you, right? So that, in other sure. words, what you're sure. seeing is based on what your friends post. And I, so, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we're we're in a we're in a we're in a fix. Okay, so I, I see that as related to the one point I made of of sort of you know living in and existing in an echo echo chamber, right? Yeah. But let's just go by my own. Like, if I could just draw on my own sort of um, Facebook feed or or the kind of articles or, or 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 news sources that I come across, the fact is that alone doesn't mean that I'm going to get inf- I'm going to get news or information that is necessarily skewed right because for example at least in my facebook feed the information that i or, or the sources that i see po- you know linked to are places like the intercept or cnn or uh talking points or memo talking points memo or uh, vanity fair the atlantic New York but, Times. But all of CNN. those sources that you okay. discussed are, uh-huh. uh, I would say, uh, center left to to left left. You know, uh, there's there's still an inherent. My point is though, I'm not I'm not getting my information from you know uh, Reddit or 4chan. Yeah, but that's you. That's because you are you know you're uh, with respect. You know, you're one of our respected elders. Okay. Um, uh, kids these days, and there's a phrase I never thought I'd say. Um, <laughs> kids these days, with the uh, with all the hippin' and the hoppin', um, <laughs> um, th- I mean, it's just it's it's different, man. I mean, I t- I, I use this as an example, right? Yeah. I'm, I tell them, I'm like, how do you know what like a, a a news site comes across your feed? How do you know if it's legitimate? And I, as an example, I'm like, if you see an article from Newsweek, is that legitimate? And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. And I'm like, what if something comes across your feed from news time? Is that legitimate? Yeah, 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 sure. I'm like, well, news time, that's not a thing. It doesn't exist. Right. Right. But they don't know that. See, that's that's the point, right? Like, we're, we're able to be like, oh, Newsweek, the magazine Newsweek. This is the website for the magazine Newsweek, right? Uh, they don't p- p- plug into print media in the same way. They don't, they don't have the long arm for what is and is not a credible source, right? So... For many of these people, I mean, think about how easy it would be to just buy the website News Time if it doesn't exist already and just fill it with BS nonsense, right? Right. Most people will click on an article or a link, read that article, and post that article without looking at the rest of the website, without saying, well, how long has this site been around? What other articles are on this site? What, like, the sort of basic. Uh, a situational governance that you want to do to make sure that you're not uh, uh, internalizing and then and then promulgating uh, faulty information. Mm, right, right. Right. This is stuff and, that you and I, I would assume, we'd sort of take for granted. Like, hey, that seems sketchy to me. Let, let me check out this website. Okay. Let me go it. to Snopes and check this out. That stuff yeah. that's sort of just like part of our DNA, it's completely outside the frame of reference for the overwhelming majority of college freshmen right now. Mm, okay. So so we're in some some deep trouble is what I'm saying. And and, and if uh, whether it's Russia or any other foreign uh, you know power out there that wants to entity that wants to sort of influence elections or influence the electorate, I mean they can continue using the sort of same, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, approach that they adopted in the 2016 election then, right? Because people are still sort of getting their information through these dubious sources. That, that's exactly right, yeah. And, 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 and I guess, is, now, is, is that indicative of just the American consumer being so easily gullible or is it, is it a deeper issue? It's a gullible plus ignorance plus polarization. I mean, there's it's there's multiple causes, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that and, and that's not getting any better. I mean, certainly, I think uh, you know if, if it see if I go with the theory that or or if I go with let's say even the conspiracy, right? That 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 Trump is a foreign agent, um, you know, the uh, Manchurian candidate uh, of choice of Russia and Putin, then, then, then I think the kind of, um, not only attacks on democratic norms and constitutional norms that we've seen from this presidency, um, but also the attacks on the media, the attack on the, the attacks on the free press, um, and, and all of that to me would just give 
more proof and evidence of that conspiracy, right? Because what, what, you know, what more could Russia want than to undermine the very kind of, you know, political fabric and sort of political institutions and, 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 uh, and, and structures that we've come to appreciate and rely on in a, in, in, in a democracy such as the United States? I mean, if, if, I'm willing to wager that that Trump is more a useful idiot than than you know sort of an agent of of agit Fine. right? Fine. That being said, he couldn't be doing a better job of of living up to everything that uh, that the Russians, uh, not even the Russians, that Vladimir Putin would want. Right. I and mean, I, I mean the way he's b blundered through the world. Um, I think I think I think this goes for our own State Department, and I think it goes for governments all across the world. They're basically in there. It's it's like a hurricane season. They're just battening down and hoping that the storm will break in either 2018 or 2020. I th yeah. I think the world can withstand four years of Trump. I don't think it can withstand eight years of Trump. Wow. Yeah, and that's yeah. not something that I'm just pulling out of thin air. That's that's uh, speaking with somebody uh, who who has worked in the State Department. That's what they've said about people working in the State Department. Right, right. But see, that's the thing. I mean, if you if you if you are a, a if you are a consumer of uh, whether it's the latest QAnon conspiracy or whatever whatever else is out there. Um, you know, that's just the deep state. See, I mean, see, everything just kind of feeds into, um, a, you know, a, a number of narratives that 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 somehow, um, uh, you know, the right wing is, you know, right wing, I guess, uh, consumers or what I don't know, like, you know, voters have been able to sort of uh, lull themselves into by believing because they just well, that's just the deep state, you know, the State Department. And yeah. And and the and and all those sort but, of but well, see this is well, the we, thing, the, the, those people honestly there's no getting through to them. G good riddance. As far as I'm concerned, I'm done. I'm I'm not going to yeah, try yeah. to. I think I, that's a good point. I, seriously, like I, uh, you, I I'd rather bang my head into the wall, right? That thirty five percent or that yeah. thirty percent that's always going to the, be there. The, it, to me, there's certain red flags in conversation. If you say deep state, done with you. If you say SJW, social justice warrior, done with you. Like I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? Life's too short. Right, right, right. Okay. So, so that, that's that's kind of where I'm at. You know, when it comes to this type of stuff, as soon as you bring up QAnon as like, a, and and if you don't, folks, if you don't know what QAnon is, just Google it. I I don't have the energy to dive down <sighs> that that rabbit hole of just just insanity. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know. I know. Vice has done a really good sort of piece on 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 that that sort of whole movement and that conspiracy movement. So yeah, it's fascinating. For, as an observer, but scary to believe that there are, or scary when you realize that there are actually people out there who believe in this stuff. So that's exactly uh, frightening. Right. Yeah, frightening. Yeah. Um, but okay, so we are uh, very close to, or no, we're we're in the middle of a a a, a, uh, a midterm. Um, what do you see as sort of happening? What you know, um, or in some of the races that we've already seen in some of the primaries and and. Uh, do you, do you see? Do you feel like the writing's sort of already on the wall when it comes to um, Republicans uh, well, control? Well, well control. if there's anything I've learned, it's it's uh, uh, don't make predictions, right? Um, and, and don't underestimate the Democratic Party's ability to lose. Yeah, very true. I I, I think that um, if if history is our guide, then yeah. then uh, yeah, I mean I, the the Democrats will most likely take back the House. Okay, and I, you know, I, I have to wonder. There's a part of me that wonders if a lot of Republicans are, uh, are in Congress are kind of hoping that happens. Okay, because for the, the you know, for all of the appearances of them being in lockstep behind the scenes, they're they're you know in panic mode about what Trump is doing, right? But they're in they're boxed in because they're so beholden to their own political fortunes and their base that they can't. Say boo about it. Exactly. No, right? no. I think I think that's a real, yeah. That is absolutely true. So, mm -hmm. in the sense of like, oh, let let the other people take over. They'll do their oversight job. We get to be like, oh, don't do that, and then they get to like stay good with their base. Um, Correct. I think that's what they would like, even if that means things grinding to a halt for the next two years, which is going to, you know, I mean, how is that different from what's happened the last two years, right? Uh, <laughs> right. Right. So so so. 
I mean, think about it. As I said, Trump's approval rating right now is at 40%. 40%. Yeah. You don't hold Congress with 40%. You don't win elections with 40%. You know, right. especially when you think about it. Pennsylvania, he Trump won Pennsylvania. He won Pennsylvania by 1%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at like, this is the thing. I always say this, right? I'm like, number one, let's not, this is something Trump himself said. He said, if the election was held a day earlier, or a day later, it might, it probably would have gone differently. Mm. That's what Trump said in a, in a moment of amazing accidental candor. <laughs> right? Right. But right. what that means, when we look at the actual numbers, his victory was clinched by a couple hundred thousand votes over several states. Right. 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 So in other words, he's not, he is not inevitable. We, we, what we know is he is hugely unpopular. We also know that whatever, to whatever extent he is popular, it's not transferable popularity because he wasn't able to get his, these other crackpots uh, across the finish line. Right. Like, like, um, Roy Moore, Roy Moore else. and yeah, this, this neo-Nazi out of wherever, you know, uh, which like, there's so many, you're like, which neo-Nazi? Oh, that neo-Nazi. Like there's so many Republican neo-Nazis. Exactly. Right? That's another right, weird right. thing. But, but so, so all of that being said, uh, plus the fact that the party in power tends to lose seats in midterms, that tells me, Plus the the huge amount of democratic enthusiasm tells me that probably probably uh, the, the at least the house will switch. But I'm I'm not making any predictions. I will say this: I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that it is an existential moment that we get separate powers uh, uh, during this midterm because because otherwise it's two more years of of nothing happening yeah right you know right, i mean right. i mean one of the geniuses of this country is that uh, the founding fathers built a brake lever into the process every two years mhm mm mm -hmm. and and uh, you know i mean this is one of these times when we say well uh if you don't lo use it you lose it yeah that's right you know that's right and and for um, all the people who voted for trump sitting content in their place of privilege and saying, well, uh, how bad could it be? Let's give it a shot. How bad could it be? Well, it's as bad as can be, <laughs> you know? Yeah. True words, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I agree. And, uh, although, you know, I, I don't know. So the house wins, I mean, sorry, the Democrats went back to house and then what? I mean, I don't see this party. I, I like my faith in the Democratic Party really doing anything is also, uh, you know. Well, oversight uh, begins in the House. Yes, I know, but we also have Pelosi sort of going on the record as saying, uh, you know, we don't, we don't at least intend on proceeding with it in, in, in impeachment. Let's see what sort of happens. Like as if you know, I mean, more criminality needs to be unveiled. But, but I mean, think about it. I mean, what, what, what's she going to say, right? It, it's smart politics. Rally because, up your, no, rally up your base, man. No, no because the base no? is going to be there. Because think about it: if you say, "Oh, vote for us," we're going to impeach Trump. You're going to activate Trump voters who don't want that. Okay. Yeah, I right? mean, and and the fact is, you have people like the talking heads on Fox News um, and, and those in right-wing media who are already saying that that's what the Democrats yeah, that the, the they, intend to because, do. Because, because uh, enthusiasm on the right is, is not there, you know? Yeah, So this right. is what will get them jazzed. I mean, I, I was reading a thing the other day that's interesting about how, how Republican consultants are concerned because Trump's fake news message has, has, has been a little too effective with his base. Because he's out there being like, don't listen to the polls. We're going to have red wave, red wave, red wave, right? And why? Yeah. That's coming from his place of ego because he doesn't want their, he doesn't want to accept the possibility that he is unpopular, right? Of course. So his voters are like, well, I don't believe the polls. I think everything's fine. And that's making them less inclined to go out and vote. Like, like how can you impeach a president that's, that's doing such a great job, yeah, right? exactly. You know, that's what he said this I mean, week. I mean, it, it's, yeah. I mean, what do you say, you know? What do you say to that? That's really? right. That's, that's right. And, and just, yeah, wow. Just, just fascinating times, man, where you have, you know, it's not even like these, the, you know, the, uh, the kind of unethical behavior that, 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 that we see, uh, just, we have a president who just, there's not even an attempt to hide it. 
There was not even an attempt to sort of uh, uh, at least, uh, uh, you know, portray it in a different light. It's just naked, bolden, uh, you know. Yeah. Unethical behavior, right? Yeah. Like I, I chose Jeff Sessions because he was loyal. That's right. right. For example, That's I mean, right. you may believe that you may you you may have intended that, but you know nobody says that because yeah. it it undermines. But, but this the is what happens when, I mean, he has grown up uh, completely cushioned by yeah. his his wealth and his status, and I mean, you know, you talk about different rules for the wealthy. Well, what better example of there that is there? Than Donald Trump, the fact that right Absolutely. now, this you know this Weisselberg testimony. I mean, everyone knows that he's got skeletons to hide, right? It, it's and 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 you say to yourself, well, how is it that he got away with it for decades? Like this is the weird thing, right? Like yeah. we all we all know he's guilty. Right. He acts like a guilty person he speaks like a guilty person and yet we go on with this this uh this kabuki theater right yeah you know i mean he's guilty to an extent that we've never seen by anybody and i would include you know you know even george w bush whose policies were disastrous on on both domestic and and international levels we never saw this level of of open lawlessness from him open lawlessness uh, yeah exactly lawlessness criminality yeah criminality yeah at large writ large yeah wow so um hopefully you know we were able to correct course uh in the next couple of months with the with the midterms um um i i, I guess uh we have seen some good news coming out of uh, uh muslim candidates running I, I know that's been um uh i i know things that I guess recent stories that that that, that, that we are seeing, whether yeah. it's Keith Ellison, right? Who else? Um, uh, we have uh, Rashida. Uh, yeah, in him. Michigan. Yes. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then um, 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 in Minnesota, we also have uh, Ilham Omar. I yeah. think is yeah. Her? That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. took uh, Keith Ellison seat. That's right. That's right. And then Keith Ellison, meanwhile, is running for AG of the state of Minnesota. That's correct. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. So and, and yeah. he's he's having to deal with some controversy, by the way. That's right. The story of uh, I think an ex girlfriend or something. Who, that's that's correct. Right. Um, which he denies. Ch charges, which I guess we should state for the record that he denies. He he um, he categorically denies it. So. Um, it, right, right, and it didn't seem to really affect uh, the outcome of the uh, of the race there because he uh, he at least won the primary, correct? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I know past guest of the show, uh, uh, Doctor Abdul Sayed. You know, Abdul Sayed didn't do as well, uh, but um, you know, I, I, I for one don't think that's the last we've sort of seen of him, um, and I think he ran a. He ran a tremendous campaign where he was able to sort of glean the support of the likes of Bernie Sanders and 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 uh, others within the Democratic Party, and I think that certainly bodes well for um, other candidates, if not you know um, um, you know Dr. Sayed's um, own political future. Very true. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other big news, obviously, is uh, the passing of Senator John McCain. Yeah, that's right. Um, that sort of uh, came right in the middle of all of this uh, news that was kind of breaking about the Trump, uh, you know, what was the, the, the going ons at the Trump administration and all the, uh, you know, like the Cohen news and the, uh, the Manafort news. So yeah, that, that uh, I imagine in some, some ways it was kind of a little bit of a relief for Trump. Uh, but uh, sorry, I couldn't resist kind of talking about Trump in the context of that, but. Uh, well, and, and I think that, uh, uh, to some it, extent, it, it can't help but be about Trump. I mean, obviously, uh, the, the idea of John McCain uh, getting brain cancer is not something that he planned on or would have liked, obviously. But certainly, uh, based on the what we're sort of learning in the aftermath of his passing, uh, yeah. the, the, the thought that he put into planning his uh, funeral ceremony uh, feels very much like it was intentionally engineered to to uh, throw shade, if you will, 
as the young yeah. people say, uh, at at the president. I mean, very deliberately. And and there's there's a broader conversation here that's not just within the Muslim community, but also uh, in sort of the 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 right slash left, you know, in the broader American electorate about about whether the lionization that's happening about John McCain is is a little too much. Right. And I think I know you've said this and it was I remember and I was kind of I was one, I got to be honest, I was kind of impressed that you uh, threw this term out there. But, you you know, you, you talked about the idea of a of, of a hagiography. Right. So yes. sort of lionizing that occurs uh, again, exactly what you just said, which is the kind of postmortem lionizing that does occur. Um, you know, to an extent. So, well, there's so many things I want to talk about. I mean, there is the Trump angle of it. And we'll, maybe we'll come back to that. But um, I think as far as in the days that followed, I know, or, you know, literally the day of, and certainly I would even say maybe, a, you know, one or two days after, there was almost like that period of moratorium where even like so-called, like some of the opinion pieces that I've seen now more recently that have been very critical of John McCain's record you just didn't see anything. I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't scour the internet. Maybe there was some, in the, you know, in, in the more left-leaning uh, publications that were right from the very get-go, you know, sort of writing their uh, op-eds on, on on his legacy. But I felt there was a, sort of that moratorium period um, where I felt that there was sort of the absence of that moratorium period, if I'm going to be honest, in terms of people commenting or taking issue with John McCain's legacy or the yeah, lionization. I, I well, really feel like this is sort of the nasty outgrowth, the, the nasty slash inevitable outgrowth of the social media age where, yeah. where everyone uh, not only has a venue to, to voice their thoughts, but they feel the compulsion to voice their thoughts uh, no matter the occasion. Yeah. And well, I was just going to say like where I felt that the moratorium was absent was really among my sort of Muslim cohorts on social media. Like it I, I was mean, I, like, I would broaden that to say people on the left in general, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, so, so you, you, you did come across early, like within hours. I, yeah. I, I mean, definitely on the Muslim I'm not side. as active. So certainly on, maybe on Twitter, maybe certainly, more. Yeah. On, on Twitter. And you know, I mean, uh, to some extent on the Muslim side, I can understand. Uh, Why do you say that? Because you know he's uh, John McCain is someone who stood for the uh, uh, you know the the military industrial complex uh, and specifically the military industrial complex's presence in the Middle East as as a rectifying force a quote unquote right. rectifying force. And so we get it. You know, I mean th that's something I can at least understand. Even though reflexively I say, well, let's. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, you know, let uh, the body's still warm, you know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I, I feel like there's a decorum, and you know, I, I and I'm not just saying it because it's McCain. I would say this probably about anybody who has a uh, 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 a, a just you know a, a complex kind of legacy where that's right. And I think to an extent, everybody is nuanced, right? I mean, people, you know, you, you know, now talk about the Obama presidency and, and you know, if we're, if we're being honest, we're going to have a nuanced conversation about the Obama presidency. Uh, I don't think it's black and white. And, and I think that's some of the problems that I do see um, just on some of the pieces that I've read where it's very black and white. Um, so for example, let me just take this. And this is maybe what you were alluding to when you said, you know, from the Muslim point of view, you can understand, it's understandable why the, the reaction was what it was initially to his passing is, is, is McCain was certainly hawkish. I mean, there's no, there's no denying that. Yeah. But I mean, that hawkishness also included, however, a, a, you know, in terms of his position on Syria and arming the rebels and taking action against Assad, you know, so, so it's like, well, yeah, you, you have to take hawkishness or you, even when you're examining just the hawkishness component to his legacy, even that's nuanced because then, well, well, where do, how do we as Muslims feel about his policies in Syria? Well, I think most of us supported the idea of arming or enabling the rebels against the oppression and persecution of the Assad forces, right? So even there, therein lies some nuance, right? Not to mention uh, other parts of his maybe more domestic uh, legacy. 
Right, right. Which yeah. I'm not. Which I'm not as I'm not I'm I'm not as 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 versed in as perhaps you are. Like for example, with the healthcare, I know you know, and th- and this will maybe kind of segue into our conversation around Trump. Trump, but you know, he certainly wasn't. You know, he was certainly not in Trump's good graces either. Uh, it was mutually felt in terms of you were talking about him not being invited, to, Trump not being invited to the funeral, and, and being passed up to say any comments about the legacy and so on. Um, and he asked, and, and and also worth mentioning that Sarah Palin was not invited to the funeral, uh, which is a great point because I, I I don't think we can talk about I, I would like I, because I want to talk about Trump, and then I was going to kind of tie in the, the the connection because that's to me um, inescapable in terms of a conversation about the line that one can draw between the politics that arose with. With Palin, oh she, yeah, she was the. I mean, I, I've said this before, and and maybe this is blasphemous, but but no, yeah, I, I look at Sarah Palin as John the Baptist uh, in terms of Trumpism. Wow, I'm so, going to have to ask you to kind of elucidate. She, or... she she came and she sort of spread the word of uh, the Messiah who is coming, Donald Trump. She wow. she laid the pipe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, you, I mean, uh, that's the thing. I mean, this is you know, for all of, for all of John McCain's protestations, for all of Steve Schmidt's uh, protestations, Steve Schmidt, who was John McCain's campaign manager and who has been oh, yeah. vehemently anti-Trump, so much so that he has left the Republican Party. Sarah Palin yeah. was his idea, you know. So uh, she uh, essentially road tested. What would be – she road tested Trumpism 1.0. Yeah, yeah. I mean I was going to actually make a reference to a movie that I, I think you and I both would, would probably recommend to the audience being uh, – what is it? Game Change? Yes, Game no. Change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game, change. Game Change. Great yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. Although it really doesn't get into it as much, but a, but, but a great performance by um, uh, Ed Harris uh, who does who, – who plays McCain in, in the movie as well as uh, – uh, what's her name? Julie, Ju- Ju- Julianne Moore, who plays uh, Sarah Palin. Yeah. Um, just great performances from those two in particular. Um, they kind of get into what you're talking about, although they don't get into this idea of the kind of politics that arose with 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 with, with the crowds that were coming out to hear and, well, and, and, and cheer yeah, on Trump. They 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 allude I'm sorry, to it. I mean, I, I mean the, they do? bear in mind the, the movie came out in 2012. So yeah. so how you know it, it, nobody knew. Trumpism would happen until it happened, right? Right. Um, but the the movie definitely um, acknowledges the the sort of bat crap insanity that started happening as a result of 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 Palinism slash what you know what would become Trumpism. If there is a connective tissue, though, what give some examples of of where you think the because I, I have my own views, but between like you said, Palin and Trumpism. Well, I mean, uh, just uh, she was out there being, you know, the oh, real Americans are like this, fake Americans are like that, you know. Mm-hmm. She was she was saying horrible, ignorant things, but cloaking it in this uh, kind of this uh, facade of I'm I'm speaking, uh, I'm saying what you know other people are thinking, and and you know, um, I'm just a hockey mom from from Wasilla. Yeah, yeah, that and, was and she, cover, she right? injected uh, nastiness into uh, the the campaign that McCain for sure didn't want. And um, for example, pa- like Obama palling around with terrorists. Yeah, palling around with terrorists, et cetera. And then, of course, you know, all culminating in, in some respects with you know the moment when that woman at the McCain rally who says, "Oh, I'm afraid of him. He's an Arab," you know. And and this is interesting because that's been I a want moment. to talk about that because I think I, I sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Well, that that moment, right, is is thought of by many to be an example of why John McCain was a statesman because yeah. uh this woman says, "I'm afraid of Obama. He's an Arab." And and right away he's like, "No, no. He's and he takes the he's, microphone he away. He takes it away and he's like yeah. he's 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 not he's he's a good man. He's a family man, et cetera, et cetera." And and many uh, uh, people of color, many Muslims say, well, that even that was still an indication of his own sort of white supremacy, right? He doesn't he doesn't question the underlying assumption that an Arab, quote unquote, is a 
cannot be a, a, a good person. He's a not decent a decent man. He's a not decent a, yeah, man. He's a, a decent, decent man. That's right. And, and I, that's not how I read that Thank moment. You. I don't either. And, yeah. and, and I've, I've even, you know, because of late, obviously, that's been one of the pieces or one of the clips that the media has kind of shown a lot because a lot of people kind of use that as a moment, like you said, to to kind of demonstrate, oh, wow, like the politics of yesterday and what a noble statesman, you know, and, and they kind of bring up that particular instance. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think that was just McCain in the moment exactly responding right. to the best of his ability. Now. Yeah. I think if even if he had an opportunity to kind of do a redo on that, he would have said something differently or perhaps a little bit more nuanced. But I don't think his comment was not in that wasn't demonstrating the fact that he felt or he believed that you couldn't be a decent person and be an Arab. Correct. Yeah. I think that was just a off the cuff response of a visceral response to what this lady was saying. Yeah. And I think to who, me, who, him, who, who, I mean, was probably just a basket of crazy. <laughs> a, a Bray, one of the deplorables. Yeah. Right? He's probably just like, hey, let me just yeah. get like, let me just shut this down as fast as I can right, and right. get the hell away from her. You know, But I think what you're alluding to in terms of that moment being indicative of the kind of politics that arose with Palin because already we were seeing at rallies, McCain Palin rallies, and certainly more in the rallies that she was kind of stumping on her own, where people were saying, you know, uh, you could hear crowds booing or saying he's a fascist or he's a Muslim or, you know, you could hear the the kind of boo his, the, you know, what would later become very commonplace at a, like at a, at a Trump rally. Yes. We, we, we saw some of that at, at Palin rallies. Right. I think that's what you... I think that's what you're kind of like what you were talking about right before you brought up the instance with the, uh, with the woman. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And I think that's, I think that's, yeah, that, that is very valid. And I think in that context, you know, to, uh, which is why I put what McCain does at that moment within that overarching context of what he himself must have seen as being kind of the kind of, uh, yeah, stirring up the, that part of the base that he had no intention of doing so. Yeah, no, I agree with that, and I, and and I think his passing, uh, even you know, it, it with you know these sort of caveats that we mentioned. I mean, it still is is something sad, and uh, it is obviously to a large extent the end of an era. Uh, in in the same way that Teddy Kennedy passing away uh, nine years ago, almost to the day, uh, if not the day. Uh, that represented the end of of uh, that era. You know, the Kennedy era. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, just, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to, I, mean, I, was, I really wanted to make two points about like this as well, before we kind of move on is, is that I think anytime we're talking about the legacy and I think it's, 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 it's interesting that you raised Teddy Kennedy because, you know, when you're talking about people in the political arena, I think that you, it's almost, it's impossible. I, I can't think of except of an, of an exception, even our founding fathers where, you know, who are this sort of that, that original, like they're the Salaf, right? They're the, they're the, they're the predecessors of this, of our nation. Like they had very checkered, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, backgrounds and, 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 and checkered, uh, um, you know, politics and, and what they stood for. So I, I just think that anytime you're dealing with anyone in the political arena, they're, they're going to have the good and the bad. I mean, they're going to have elements of their legacy that are laudable and they're going to have elements of their legacy that are deplorable. And I think that that's how we should approach, I think, any political figure, right? Because if we're talking about Ted Kennedy, you know, as much as, you know, what he did for healthcare and the common person and so on, then you have to talk about, you know, Chap um, Chappaquiddick. Chappaquiddick, right? Yeah. I mean, and you, and you have to, yeah, so even John F. Kennedy, you can talk about what a statesman he was, but then you have to talk about the, you know, the womanizing and the playboy. So I think with any of that, right, I think, and so for me with McCain as well, it's like, look, does this person's, is this person's legacy uh, nuanced? Is there, is it not black and white? Yes, absolutely. But guess what? I think to me, that's, that's just the reality of the political arena. Um, right. Yeah. And, and I mean, and more recently, and, and there's a lot, I mean, it, I mean, it's still kind of an ongoing discussion, but like with Keith Ellison, right? I mean, the accusation 
that was made against Keith Ellison in the days leading up to the uh, the the election there in Minnesota. Um, you know the the allegations that came out against him. Now it's like, well, you know that 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 tarnishes his reputation. I mean, whether or not, regardless, obviously, whatever we have to kind of wait and see what happens with regards to you know the accuser and then so on, and her veracity has been called into, called into question. But nonetheless, I just think that that's the arena of politics. Is my point. Does that make sense? No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. And then the final thing I wanted to say about about just the the kind of Muslim response to John McCain and kind of what you also kind of alluded to early on is that why must everyone? And, and I mean, this is certainly social media writ large, not just among Muslim circles, but why does everyone feel the need to comment? Like it's like you know, it, I think one of my friends you know posted on his Facebook like you know, like a, a statement of the prophet saying, you know, uh, there is virtue in silence, right? Hmm. There's virtue in silence. And, and it was like hashtag John McCain, meaning that, look, just <laughs> because like on the past, like, why does everyone feel that obligated to post something? Like, you don't have to respond to every single event that's happening out there, whether it's on Twitter or social media or, or Facebook or any, or what have you. Um, you can just not comment and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's this need for response, and it's this need for well, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to say something. Well, well why? Why? Yeah. You know? Anyway, that's that, those are just sort of my kind of fleeting thoughts on on McCain. And, yeah, no, I think I think you're right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I mean, his, his, you know, his legacy will be I think examined for the you know for the it's it's the stuff for history books and. Uh, is it going to be checkered? By, by absolutely, it will be. But I, I mean, to me, that's kind of like, well, welcome to politics. You know, I think to me, that's just the reality of that arena. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and I think I wanted to. I know. Sorry. Did you want to transition out or away from this topic? Is that okay? I, I, I'm not. I'm not as smooth sometimes with the transitions as you are, Zeki. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, Just, I wanted to make a comment as we close out. I, I mean, because something that I know we've uh, posted about on Facebook and and, and certainly was uh, was in the news of late was uh, the kind of unfolding story around Imam Siraj Wahaj and his family. And uh, um, you know, uh, very the most recent update to that story is the fact that all charges uh, of uh, of child endangerment and uh, child abuse, neglect, and so on have been dropped and certainly the like the two daughters imam siraj's two daughters have been released uh, and while his son and i think son-in-law are still in custody in relation to the death of siraj ibn or siraj jr's um grandson who whose body they whose, whose remains they found uh that investigation is still pending but all other charges have been dropped oh okay wow yeah, I mean, which I found to be fascinating because, I mean, when the when the prosecutor has 10 days, you know, when the district attorney has 10 days to bring charges and they fail to do so, that often means they don't have a case. Hmm. And so, you know, that was the uh, the limit of, uh, of how long you can detain people without bringing charges and they fail to do so. And so the judge, um, you know, uh, basically, uh, yeah, yeah. It, Acquitted the two women who were who were, who were no, 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 not acquitted, sorry, released without any charges. The two daughters of Imam Siraj Wahaj, uh, who were among the adults who were who were arrested, um, and then the, all that remains is the sort of outcome of um, the charges that are that that are still remaining against his son Siraj Ibn and his and his son-in-law whose name is me and. Uh, you know, I just, I, like I said, I, um, I, I, what, I, like, what I felt in the days and, and weeks where there was sort of a, a certain level of ambiguity as to what was going to happen uh, after that story broke in terms of after the arrest was, uh, let's kind of wait and see. I mean, when, you know, the, the charges are, we don't know the capacity of the charges, we don't know, uh, you know, we, we just don't know. And so let's hold off on passing judgment. Um, I saw hit pieces on Fox News and right-wing media and, you know, tying Imam Siraj, uh, Wahaj, you know, as in Imam Siraj, um, to this base of Sihadis and, you know, 
the right wing was certainly running with it, but um, I felt that sometimes even Muslims, like I'm not saying not defending him, but just making a judgment one way or another, we kind of fall into that same kind of uh, trap of passing judgment on things that are still either under investigation or, you know, let the court, court proceedings sort of play out. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to do any good, uh, pray, for, pray for him. Think, think of Imam Siraj. Pray for Imam Siraj and his family. And I, I know that I think they set up a launch good page for his uh, for the legal services associated with. Uh, I'm sorry, legal fees associated with the. You know, if you feel the need to do something for Imam Siraj, that that's what you can do. Um, and let's see how this. Uh, you know, what the final outcome is of the. Uh, of the investigation and the criminal proceedings. There's value in, in withholding judgment. Exactly. Exactly. So, <laughs> well, thank you everyone uh, for listening. Uh, I, I think you know, we covered yeah. a lot of ground. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we'll be back. Uh, I know we'll be back. Uh, we, we look forward to having, um, uh, we've got some guests that we're reaching out to and wanting to have back on the show. Um, some of the other highlights that we that we sort of teased or at least mentioned at the outset uh, of, um, of, of uh, taking the show on the road, of being able to um, invest because of the support of our patrons uh, and, and others. Um, you know, and, and I guess the final request, I mean, I know I was plugged the Patreon page. But, you know, do us a favor. I mean, if you if you like the show, if you like what you hear, um, you know, g get a friend to listen, get, you know, spread the word. That always helps. Um, I, I know we, 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 we get more and more listeners by just word of mouth. And, and, and so many people who do write in say that, oh, well, you know, so and so told us to you know, told me to check out the show and wanted to do so. But, uh, you know, spread the word. We always appreciate that. And if you can leave us a star rating on on iTunes or Stitcher Radio or anywhere else where you download fine podcasts. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, oh, and I, I wanted to also tease the possibility or, or, or tease the fact that in the upcoming, um, if not on the next show or maybe the show after, um, we're going to actually have a, a sponsor uh, for the show who's very graciously agreed to come on and uh, 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 advertise uh, and uh, sponsor the show, so we're very grateful to that. And uh, I'll just leave it there, and, and we'll tease that um, at, for for future episodes. But uh, where can people find us, Zucky? Well, you can uh, uh, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash diffuse congruence, and you can uh, leave us a comment there, or send a message. We'll get back to you. Also, email us at diffuse congruence at gmail dot com if you have anything to say to us. That's right. And uh, thank you, for, as always, for listening. And uh, we look forward to uh, bringing you more episodes in the future and uh, look forward to engaging you online or wherever you can find us. Thanks, everybody, for listening.